Increasing this one habit that you already do can make you one of the companions of the Prophet Wasallam in Jannah. Assalamu alaikum. I'm your brother Abu Abdis Salam speaking to you from the blessed city of Mecca. That's Mecca al Mukarramah. Rabi'ah ibn Ka'ab al Aslami, radiallahu anhu, a companion of the Prophet, وسلم, was known for his unwavering service to the Messenger of Allah. He devoted his entire life to be in the company of the Prophet وسلم, and he would spend his nights in his companionship, helping him with his needs, including getting him water for wudu. Touched by Rabi'ah dedication, the Prophet وسلم, said to him, ask me for something. Rabi'ah with his purity of devotion responded saying, I request your companionship in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. What would we ask the Prophet وسلم, if he were in front of us today asking us the same question, what do you want? The Prophet وسلم, then asked, is there anything else that you want? Rabi'ah anhu affirmed that this was his only wish, meaning he only wanted the companionship of the Prophet وسلم, in Jannah. The Prophet وسلم, then said, ala nafsika bi sujood. Help me to fulfill your request by prostrating more. This powerful hadith shakes the hearts, reminding us that every single act of worship, especially our sujood, prostrating to Allah, Lord of the heavens and the earth, this act of worship carries with it not just a physical act, but a step towards elevating our ranks in the hereafter. It's not merely a bodily movement, but a humble act of submission that grants us closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam in Jannah. Our obedience and love for Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam create the foundation for us to be with those whom we love in the hereafter. Our deeds, especially our salah, our obligatory and voluntary prayers, and the sincerity and humility in our prostrations can directly correlate to how high our ranks will be in Jannah. The more we engage in the nawafil or voluntary prayers, increasing in our prostration, the more we solidify our chances of being in the company of the best of creation, Muhammad the son of Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in Jannah. Isn't that the thing that every single Muslim desires? to be with the Prophet Muhammad in Jannah. The Prophet said, increase in your prostrations. For every prostration that you perform before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise your position one degree and will remove one of your sins. Subhanallah, how merciful is Allah? How easy it is to get closer to Allah? How much more should we love prostrating to Allah, Lord, of the heavens and the worlds. Of course, as we all know, the quality of our worship matters immensely. When we prostrate, we should feel a great deal of humility and submission to Allah, allowing us to be completely engrossed in communication with Him. But many of us may ask, how can I, being this insignificant, tiny creation among many of Allah's great creations, how can I increase my feeling of being present in front of Allah, Lord of the world, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Especially when we have so many thoughts, worries and fears racing in our minds in this day and age. Work meetings, deadlines, assignments, bills to pay, budgets, kids to entertain, spouses to please, the list is never ending. How is it even possible to focus with humility and concentration when prostrating with all these distractions zooming in and out of our minds? Well, there are two steps we can take during our prostration to accomplish this. The first is understanding that when we prostrate, we are prostrating to the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in between. We are prostrating the creator of life and death itself. We are prostrating to the only being in existence, the only one who can change our affairs for the better if he so wishes and deems it good. The one who is more merciful to us than our own mothers. In fact, he is more merciful to us 
than we are to ourselves. Indeed, when we say Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, we affirm that Allah is above all imperfections. It means glory be to Allah who has no imperfection. We are comforted by the realization that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has the absolute power to effortlessly alleviate our burdens. This dhikr saying Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la means that our Lord is free from everything that is imperfect. We on the other hand are filled with imperfections and have problems that we can never resolve alone. And this leads us my brothers and sisters in Islam to the second step. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the closest a slave is to his Lord is in his prostration. So increase in your du'as. Here the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is literally giving us the formula for how to get closer to Allah. And in this formula is so much benefit for us both in this world and the next. It's really that simple. If the closest a person is to his Lord is during his sajda, his prostration, then it stands to reason that if we want to get closer to Allah, then we should simply prostrate more. And the second part of this prophetic formula is to make dua. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beg Him for anything that you wish. Beg Him to clear your debts. Beg Him to remove your anxieties. Beg Him to increase you in your sustenance. Beg Him and cry to Him for every single one of your worries and problems and keep doing this every single day. And then watch what happens in your life. Watch how your problems fade away one by one in ways you could never imagine. And while everyone else on earth eventually gets fed up when you keep asking them for things over and over again, your Creator instead gets happy. Allah is pleased with it and Allah loves it when His slaves humble themselves in supplication. This is why our prostration is one of the most powerful places for us to make dua. So make dua. Make dua in your own language. Vent to Allah about all your worries and fears and ask Him to aid you in fixing them. Allah loves it when we seek His aid. Not only will you find that you feel better about whatever was occupying your mind, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a solution for it as a result. So let us seize these precious moments to pour our hearts out and be assured that He hears, He knows, and he responds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord said, make dua to me and I will respond to you. Make this practice a living tradition in your daily prayers. Make dua as much as you can whenever you do a sajda to Allah and for sure you will increase your focus, concentration and humility in your prostrations. Any prostration to Allah where one attains greater focus and presence of mind is superior to one where he doesn't. And the lengthy prostration in which one is sincerely devoted to one's Lord is superior to that which is shorter. Therefore, while quantity does matter, quality purifies and elevates our worship. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, let us all strive to embellish our prayers with abundant and heartfelt prostrations, nurturing both their quantity and quality so we can elevate our ranks in the hereafter and be blessed to be in the company of the Prophet ﷺ in paradise. May every sajda be a stepping stone for us towards that sublime goal. And may we all find comfort and humility in our prostrations. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us with his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the highest levels of Jannah without reckoning nor punishment. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Please don't forget to share this with your loved ones so together we can all try to increase in our prostrations and closeness to Allah. Once again, I'm your brother Abu Abdus Salam speaking to you from the blessed city of Mecca. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.